Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Men of courage, women of faith, children of hope, elderly of vision. We are brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers in Jesus Christ. Across the International Ministerial Congress, we have many languages, countries, cultures and traditions. And we are blessed to participate in this conference in the richness of the heritage that the Lord God has given us. I want to bring warm greetings from brothers and sisters in Australia. With digital technology, many of us sent, have sent photos of home. Hello. We've sent photos to our homes. Yeah. So brothers and sisters on the far ends of the world are celebrating with us today. And wherever we are, we've been hearing so far in this conference one common theme. We've been called as part of the body of Christ to echo an awesome message of hope. Jesus Christ commissioned us to share what's extraordinary good news everywhere to everyone. So in order to begin, we probably best first start with a first century church. And then as we look through the epistles that the apostles wrote, we begin to see an emerging template of how this awesome responsibility that God has given us, how we might do it. Of course, God has already equipped us with a lot of resources like publications, radio, digital media, television, other resources so we can share the good news. But today we're going to explore the premise from which we begin this evangelism. What we're going to explore in sharing the gospel is not through programs or strategies. We need, we need programs, we need strategies, we need capable administrators, but there's something that comes first. The greatest path to the biblical ethos of evangelism that's a part of our church is through the biblical method of fellowship. And, and so this message is a call to fellowship. You see, sometimes in our local language, when we talk about fellowship, we might think it's small talk or a place we worship. Sister, 
We sometimes think of fellowship as food and fun and socialising. And there's nothing nicer than when brothers and sisters in Christ share table. But the biblical model of fellowship is much bigger, much grander, more awesome than that. Fellowship is a way of life. It's a powerful, blinding brotherhood. Today we're going to look at the New Testament word for fellowship, which is kononya. This word koinonia, often translated into fellowship, appears 20 to 30 times in the New Testament. And it can reflect shared community. It can reflect communion and brotherhood. It can reflect participation and generosity. The ethos of Christianity is a shared way of life. When we study in the early part of the book of Acts, the Jerusalem church, we see a church full of unity. It was a unity of spirit and a unity of doctrine. There was a unity of faith, a unity of practice. But if we compare that early church with modern Christianity, we see that Christianity today is in crisis. It's not only the church of today that's in crisis, it was also the church in Asia Minor that was in crisis 25 years somewhat after Jesus ascended to heaven. We read Jesus' message through the Apostle John to go and tell a message to the seven churches in Asia Minor. These were the church of God. But one was a loveless church. Another one was an immoral church. Another one was Jesus called a dead church. And one church, Jesus said, it, they were pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. So the question we have to ask, as we look at the modern church, we have, it's not for a lack of education. It's not for a lack of resources or talent or time. We see across Christendom today a lack of unity, a disunity in doctrine and disunity in faith and practice. Sometimes we see fellowship as a great show, 
but lacking in substance. The call to the Church of God Seventh Day around the world through the International Ministerial Congress is to be a vibrant, alive church. And I hope today that we are inspired as we go through the journey of what fellowship is, this unique Greek word koinonia. A Bible study of this word gives the following meanings. This word koinonia translated fellowship, communion or participation. It can mean having things in common. It can be the sharing of a common faith. Having a common salvation. Distributing to those who are needy. Partaking and sharing together. Communicating and being willing to communicate. And to join in a fellowship and a shared brotherhood that's stronger than blood. See, fellowship, the word, Greek word konyonia, indicates a powerful togetherness for the benefit of all. If we read from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16, the author writes, Do not neglect to do good and to share, which is the Greek word konyonia, what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. To do good and to share leads us into the first point, a spirit of generosity. Right through the testimony of scripture, we see so many examples that the needs of others are met and in doing so this becomes commendable before God. The Apostle Paul at times struggled to make ends meet in his ministry to the brothers and sisters of Christ. A few minutes ago we took up an offering. And the Apostle Paul says in Galatians 6 verse 6, let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. And that word share is one of the translator's versions of the Greek word konyonia, which is a very powerful word. So the pastor who teaches is blessed by those who receive the word. See, 
and, and serving within the International Ministerial Congress, I am privileged to see so much sharing and caring and providing. So right throughout Paul's epistles, there's a strong message to share, to communicate the grace of God from all the resources that we've been blessed with. And part of that is meeting the physical needs of each other. So that's uh, the physical aspect. When we move to the spiritual aspect, I'll title this the second point, the spiritual fellowship of believers. Listen to how the scriptures uses this unique Greek word koinonia in these following verses. Paul refers to, to Titus as a true son in the common faith. Jude talks about sharing a common salvation. Peter, John and James extended the right hand of fellowship to Paul and Barnabas. And this conference, I've seen a lot of the right hand of fellowship between languages and cultures and countries and continents. And we know how beautiful it is to experience the right hand of fellowship between brothers. Hallelujah. Let's explore what the Apostle John has to say. First John 1 verse 3. That which we've seen and heard we proclaim to you. That you too may have fellowship with us. That word koinonia. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. You see, the Apostle John sums it up beautifully, doesn't he? Throughout his writings, the Apostle John takes us into the heart of divine and human fellowship. This is, it's not about what fellowship it's about, is about, it's about who fellowship is about. And the third point, fellowship is about fellowship with our Heavenly Father. See, John tells us that we're all children of God. He reminds us that we're of the light, not the darkness. He tells us that because of Christ, the evil one is overcome. We have Konyonya fellowship with the Father. Through Jesus Christ. Let's read from John chapter 17 when Jesus was praying. He said, the glory that you've given me, I have given them. That they may be one as, as we are one. I in them and you in me. So the relationship that Jesus Christ has with the Father 
is the same relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. And now comes the first hint of what this message points towards. That, that they may be perfectly one. So that the world may know that you've sent me. So our key to evangelism and process and, and, and programs and strategies begins on the platform of being united to the Father through Christ so the world will know because we're united with each other. Philip asked the question, show us the Father. And Jesus said, Have I been with you so long, Philip, that you haven't seen the Father? If you know me, said Jesus, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so we get a glimpse of now the, the fourth point is that we have fellowship with Jesus Christ. Paul wrote to a church 2,000 years ago in the Greek city of Corinth. He said, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. Remember the prayer in John 17 where Jesus says, I in them and they in me. Remember the parable of the vine in John chapter 15? Jesus said, Abide in me and I in you. He said, Apart from me, you can do nothing. So that from the strength of our communion and fellowship with Jesus, then we can do. To the church in Revelation that was pitiful, poor, blind and naked, Jesus had one special request. Can you imagine a Christian church where Jesus is outside of a church knocking? Jesus was knocking at the door for a whole church he described as pitiful, poor, blind and naked. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door. I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. What an unusual request to correct the church. In first century imagery, you made a strong public statement about who you ate with. In our more cosmopolitan modern society, we don't usually mind with whom we eat. But, the, but those in the first century would have treasured those words, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Amen. The fifth point for those of us who are writing down them writing them down in bullet points is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes that word is translated fellowship, sometimes it's translated participation, but the meaning is still the same. 
na asemfo ya wo ka ho asemi ese ye suma bom e tra bi so na ese ye di ye ho hye dwuma bi bi mu na su ni nyina no ya de pro na in the second letter that paul wrote to those at corinth he said the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, Paul says, If there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, or any konyonya in the Spirit, any affection, any sympathy. And in verse 2, he talks about the same mind being of this one accord. And so we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. We are called to walk in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings to mind Jesus' words. The Holy Spirit in the Greek word parakletos means comforter and consolation. And in those difficult times when we have to stand and give a testimony, the Holy Spirit puts the right words in our hearts and minds. And so we participate and share in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So can I ask a question? Are we today of one mind and of one accord? Despite our language and cultures and diversity, are we the one in Christ? Because the Apostle John addressed this very same issue 2,000 years ago. John wrote in the first John, This is the message we heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light and in him there's no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, there's that word again. While we walk in the darkness, we lie and we don't practice the truth. Listen to this. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And we are assured of that because the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. This leads us to the final and the seventh point. Which, uh, because our relationship with one another has an interdependence on our vertical relationship with Jesus Christ. In, in other words, the interdependence of Konyonyo of fellowship is that if we have fellowship with the Father, if we walk in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. There, there is an interdependence between in godly fellowship. Let's explore this interdependence on another level. In Romans 8 verse 9, Paul tells us, If we don't have the Holy Spirit, we don't have fellowship with Christ. And then there's the physical level. James talks about a brother in need. Now, 
James teaches us that we have true fellowship with our brother when we meet his needs. When we share those resources, material wealth, whatever we have that God has given us with our brother and our sister. I am fair skinned and I badly needed mosquito repellent. And so, when I read Matthew 25, Jesus in a parable, he said, I, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. Yesterday I was thirsty and a young lady came and gave me a bottle of water. And I sensed the love and a provision that ministered to me that reflected Matthew 25. Jesus says, I was in the parable, I was naked and you, you found some clothes for me. I was sick and you came to me. I was in prison and you visited me. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. And listen to the interdependence of fellowship. As you did it to the least of these, my brethren, said Jesus, or the king, you've, you've done it to me. How powerful is that? The scriptures show that shared community in godly fellowship is lived in sharedness and in deep communion. And, and we know that we are only temporary custodians of the resources and the blessings and God's providence that He's given us. As we walk towards a greater vibrancy in Christ, May we walk towards a greater generosity in, for one another. Because most of us here would have a testimony that we are here today because of someone else's generosity. And from the depth of this communion and fellowship, we begin to hear the Lord's call to evangelism. We are called to shared participation in the labor the Lord calls us. So the disciples together praying for the Lord of the harvest to send laborers inadvertently found themselves as the laborers. We must be malleable in God's hands and allow him to do his good work in us. See, fellowship is not an optional extra in the dynamic of church life. We are co-heirs co with Christ. We are promised shared community for eternity. So as we come into communion and fellowship and participation with Jesus Christ, we also come into relationship with his body. And in the love and the fellowship and the power of God's Spirit in us, we also become disfellowship from the world. 
Et puis c'est plus au plan où tu viens à moi et où il moi. We may, in our past lives, have lived in darkness. But God has called us into light. And walking together in light, we function as a whole in unity. So if we were to look at ourselves in the spiritual mirror, Ask ourselves, am I making the body of Christ sick and lethargic? Or am I helpful to the body of Christ to make it alive and vibrant? Am I full of grace and truth? Or gripe and trash. And by God's grace, walk in the light, we've left that life behind. This, this commitment to fellowship runs very, very deep. You know, in order that we love one another to the fullest, we must be prepared to daily die for each other. In John chapter 15, in John chapter 15, Jesus says, Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Yes, my Listen to the key to evangelism in John chapter 13. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Jesus said, could have said, by this you are my disciples, if you do great miracles, if you have great prophecies, if you understand all doctrine. But the highest note that Jesus commended to us is simply love one another. And, in living, and living the sacrificial life, we can ask ourselves some further questions. Do I covet entertainment and the world's goods when the resources that I have might accomplish God's will in someone else's life? Would my participation in the shared community allow me to give all that I have to follow Christ? There was a rich young man that walked away from Jesus because he couldn't do that. You cannot serve God and mammon. And as we give ourselves in shared community, the purposes of God is exalted. It plays out in the everyday life. If someone asks me for my coat, I'll give him a blanket as well. In the call to go above duty, if someone asks me to go one mile, said Jesus, be prepared and go for two. You see, the fellowship that we've been called to in Christ is just like marriage. The church is called the bride of Christ. <laughs> and so Konyonya 
is like the sharedness of communion and fellowship and intimacy and oneness that we have on a physical level that reflects the divine glory. We live together, we work together, we pray together. And so God's will is accomplished through our sacrificial yielding to each other. And by being participants in his divine nature, his will, his work, his mission, his purpose on this earth will be accomplished. See, there are a variety of methods and strategies and programs that we can begin with to share the gospel. But it's only on the legitimate ethos of fellowship that we have the right and the strength and the power and the divine glory to be about evangelism. Let's go back for a moment to John chapter 17. Jesus prays. I don't ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So we believe for the word of Matthew, Mark, and John. Their testimonies convey to us the reality of the heart and mind of Jesus in his earthly ministry. Jesus says that they may all be one just as you father I are in me and I in you that they may also be one in us and in that shared oneness something amazing happens so that the world may believe that you sent me. It mattered to Jesus that this message got out to the world. Again, this is reflected in John chapter 14, verse 31. He says, I do as the Father has commanded me. The oneness that Jesus reflected was in everything that he did. And listen to this. So that the world may know that I love the Father. It matters to Jesus that the world knew. Again in John chapter 17. So that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you've loved me. So as the greater harvest sees an extraordinary love among the people of God. We begin to embrace the, the miracle of evangelism because it's his work. And it can only happen on the platform and the ethos of shared community in the Greek word konyonia. We have fellowship and oneness. We share in community and participation and communication. And in walking in the light, we've left our former ways behind. And only on that platform of fellowship can the work of God in this world be accomplished. The world is facing, according to Jesus, 
The greatest time of challenge that lies yet ahead. The strength of our journey for whatever exists through good times and difficult will depend on the oneness that we share with Jesus. And the oneness that we share together. We will be a vibrant church when Jesus returns. By God's grace, we won't be loveless or dead or pitiful and poor. We stand shoulder and shoulder because of God's good grace in our life together, binding us together in fellowship. May this call of fellowship be among us as mothers and fathers and children and brothers and sisters and grandparents. United in Christ, united with each other, and call to fellowship. God bless you all. God bless you all as we walk together. Amen. Amen.